let's talk about some people who actually weren't happy who actually weren't happy about rogan special there's a lot of people out there there's a lot of people out there who have some very not nice things to say about rogan so let's read through some reviews let's read through some reviews the first review here we got courtesy of the new york times the title in his stand-up so in his stand-up special rogan plays dumb the new york times is accusing joe rogan of playing dumb <laughs> let's read what they had to say about him so this is per courtesy of new york times by the writer called jason zinnerman what does jason say about rogan jason says the follows on saturday night joe rogan started glitching minutes into his live comedy special burned the boats the movements of his mouth did not match what he was saying audio went in and out certain phrases repeated max headroom style someone in a conspiracy minded as joe rogan might wonder was this payback for criticism of vaccines and lockdowns is this mainstream media behind this aliens more likely just boring old technical difficulties live streaming remains a work in progress for netflix following stand-up um hours well following stand-up hours by chris rock cat williams rogan became the third comic to try this experiment putting out his first special in six years you could use you could see the logic of getting him to do it during the election season but oddly he didn't address the latest development of the presidential campaign. Rogan made more news last week on his podcast where he suggested the assassination of Donald Trump has been a memory hold and that Kamala Harris could win. He also suggested that the reason President Biden sometimes seems more... Co- Why are you not- Talk about the special, man. Why are you rabbiting about this? Talk about the fucking special. Anyway, part of the reason that Rogan has built his most popular podcast in the world in that is what promises to explore ideas and that he says mainstream media ignores or downplays. Was the moon landing fake? Um, are aliens landing in Roswell and does wearing a mask make you seem like less of a man Joe is in on it and yet there is one question you don't hear investigated on the podcast one relevant to his success but taboo in certain um, presence of the comedy world is Joe Rogan good at stand-up comedy oh he's borrowing my fucking title from my patreon episode or series is Joe Rogan funny he titled it is Joe Rogan good at stand-up comedy that's the question that everybody's wondering now, isn't it? After watching Burn, Your, Burn the Boats on Netflix, is Joe Rogan good at stand-up comedy? Let's hear what he says. That can be a dangerous one for some comics to touch on because Rogan has become a powerful gatekeeper. The owner of a club in Austin, Texas, and a host who drives viewers to specials and movies, Rogan tends to be talked about as a political or sports figure, a guru for boys, a guru for bros, sorry, a symptom of a cultural rampant with conspiracy, transphobia, misinformation. But his current notoriety is all built on decades-long career of stand-up, which provides contrast to his other media jobs. Raw. New York Times are basically saying that people don't want to criticize Rogan's stand-up comedy because they're afraid if they do, they won't get on Rogan and they won't appear on the comedy mothership. At the comedy mothership. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> oh, man! Yo, big up, big up my guy, Asar Disease. Um, this is one of the 300 Spartans, bro. I was saluting him the whole hour. Show some respect, exactly. Um... Big up my guy Coiler. Big up, big up my guy Coiler. New York Times is trash. Yes, Co- uh, what to say? Asad Aziz. Yeah, no, AZ. We all knew he wasn't. You, for some reason, insisted his old sentence. Uh, don't remind me, brother. Don't remind me, man. I'm so fucking embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed. Don't remind me, bro. Don't remind me. I was fighting here, two for nail on this stream fighting arguing with people in the fucking stream chat saying no rogan's actually funny you haven't watched his old material his old material and then i went back in i went back into the archives for my patrons specifically to put some content up on there and to give me an excuse to listen to the specials because you can't upload that stuff onto youtube so i said you know what let me just dig deep let me just see what he's list- what he did and i actually listened to his first ever cd special and this guy's been shit from day dot that's the funny thing since he's documented or since he's recorded specials he's always been terrible there's never been one and i'm hoping actually because I'm, I'm now up to year 2001 in his archive so i'm gonna go back actually and listen and watch all the other ones so make sure you're subscribed to my patreon patreon.com fortress agostino link in the description i'm gonna go back and watch all of the rest of them but there has to be one i'm sure there has to be one so i know as these and other people are taking a victory lap because i was wrong but I'm sure there has to be at least one special in Rogan's, you know, archive, in Rogan's fucking discography, filmography, 
comedy special photography, whatever they're fucking called. There has to be one that's good. There has to be one. So far, I haven't found it. So far, I haven't found it, but it has to be one. I'm hoping so. <laughs> Continuing on. Whereas he performs... Um, sorry. Whereas he performs patient faultless... No, let, let's go back again. Whereas he performs patient thoughtfulness in his podcast his stand-up is frantic animated full of unmodulated yelling <laughs> that's a great way to describe rogan stand-up delivery unmodulated yelling <laughs> his eyes pop out his face reddens midway through burn the boats a jagged line of precipitation forms on his tight yellow shirt making him look like charlie brown on steroids even if it seems too hammy for a up close there's a cartoonish aspect to his persona that tells you not to take him seriously and if you're wondering is this fucking new york times writer being a bit dramatic by saying that rogan looks the way that he does when he's doing stand-up this person isn't being dramatic that's the funny thing this person isn't actually being dramatic let me actually show you this person is not being dramatic i can actually show you vis-a-vis -vis the actual special itself this person is not being dramatic at all they're being actually very accurate in their description of what rogan looks like when he's doing stand-up it's not nice it's not pretty it's not nice in the slightest let me see if i can get up with you so you can see what i mean look at this you guys should see if you scroll if i scrub through the special you can see the sweat building up and all the animated faces all the unnecessary look all the, he, he puts all these weird like, look, look at that <laughs> what the fuck is that face <laughs> Can I zoom on you? I don't think I can. Can I? No, I can't zoom on you. But what the fuck is that face? <laughs> Look at that face. Let's, let's just scrub through again. Look at that face. Let's continue on. Look at look at the faces. The reddening. Just unnecessary, like, contortions of his face. Let's continue again. Uh, look, he's all red. He looks like a tomato. Like... Honestly. Oh, he looks calm there, by the way. He looks very zen, like he's, like he's meditating, active meditation there. More fronting around and panting and going, being aggressive. The line on his shirt isn't too visible here on the 20-minute mark. But if you scrub across, you can start seeing the sweat building up under his titties. Look at the animated faces. And you can scrub across here. You'll see more sweat stains. Look, it's building up now. And you keep scrubbing across and you see a full development there. Look at that. A nice sweat stain there under the pectorials. Lovely to see. Lovely to see. Look at that at the end. Towards the end. God almighty. Yeah, there we go. There we go. There's a Rogan we all know and love. That's the one. That's the one the New York Times is talking about. Look at that face. Look at that face. Ha <laughs> ha it's right to describe them perfectly. Let's go back to this again. Oh my god, that's fucking brilliant. Let's go back to that. It continues. Um, his jokes rely on the most well-worn of stand-up subjects. Pat-downs at the airport, the comedy of old people having sex, describing a drug trick man, when it comes to sex men, have you heard, are different than women. The variation with Rogan is the additions, additional sentences mocking the straw man who those who think the differences are purely cultural. That is true, though. Like, he should be... Rogan doesn't get mocked as well or as much as Seth Rogan does. Seth, people love to mock Seth Rogan for always talking about weed and how much he smokes and making fucking ashtrays and all this sort of shit and his whole personality being about weed man weed man but rogan is way more way more exhaustive when it comes to that shit dmt man mushrooms man psilocybin man lsd man like fucking hell edibles man like he does not fucking stop but it makes sense though when you look back at his history he was the kind of guy who did start smoking in his like late 30s early 40s so it makes sense why it's blowing his mind so we all got that out of our systems when we were teenagers or maybe in our early fucking 20s but rogan legitimately only started smoking weed in his late 30s 40s so it's not surprised that he's so like yeah 420 man um let's continue um his joke constructions are also familiar the things that you think no sorry his joke constructions are also familiar the things you think but don't do the words you can't say he leans into stereotypes that have cracked up drunken clubs crowds for generations 
when he discovers from a genetic test that he has some African ancestry, you just know the joke about penis size is on its way. <laughs> Man saying Rogan's predictable and a bit of a hack. In a possible effort to exploit the live set aspect of the show, he tries crowd work asking an audience member to speak up when they yell something out after he worries aloud about the influence of China. Then when they shout about cobalt mine, he appears oddly irritated. Congratulations, he sneers. You know a thing. This writer is fucking redacted, isn't it? That person, that wasn't crowd work, you idiot. That was a heckler. This person from the New York Times is a bit dumb as well. They thought the heckler that interrupted Joe during his set was crowd work. <laughs> what <laughs> maybe hold on maybe it was maybe it was like a plant maybe to kind of spice up the, the fucking show but from what i was able to surmise that was just a heckler somebody drunk somebody too excited wanting to be involved and said something crazy and rogan kind of shut it down but he, to him to say it's crowd work is fucking hilarious um contempt for the crowd is a theme wow contempt for the crowd is a theme he pokes fun at the idea that he has any responsibility for the information he also in his podcast. If you're getting your vaccine info from me, he says, it's really my, is it really my fault? In one of his more pervasive, um, self-deprecating riffs, he says that the funniest way for him to die would be from COVID. The memes would never end, he says. It will surprise no one that Rogan brings up getting cancelled and reminds the crowd that he's just jokes. This, of course, is key to his brand and the dangerous comic bucking conventional wisdom annoying the scolds and owning the libs there is plenty in this show to get mad about he says people he believes he says he believes in pizza gate he compares gay men to mountain lions <laughs> you see when you write about comedy like this it kind of takes away the fun out of it but that's hilarious how he just like <laughs> broke the jokes or simplified what he was talking about he compares gay men to mountain lions i'm glad they exist but i don't want to be surrounded by them <laughs> and says slurs for cheap laughs not only will nothing he say here get him in real trouble but it bonds him to his audience who are told repeatedly that critics are homeless sorry that critics are humorless and the media is unfair deceptive and weird long before the kamala harris campaign embraced weird as an insult rogan used it perhaps more than any other he doesn't set up his um, conspiracies with the web of connections he does it by saying we live in weird times while his stand-up here is cliche, his podcast is not. It's less dogmatic and more paradoxical than his fiercest critics allow. He can make the ugliest jokes about shooting homeless people in one episode with comic Tom Segura. Bro, they're still talking about that episode. They're still talking about that episode with Tom. Fucking hell, let it go, bro. He then has a com serious conversation about the stigma um, that his population faces with um, Alan Graham. Graham created a non-profit organization in Austin with affordable housing and meals for people living in the street. On his podcast, Rogan can be deeply cynical, then staggeringly gullible. He can also have a long, interesting conversations if the subject is one of um, that one, one that he of his preoccupations: drugs, martial arts, <laughs> drugs and mixed martial arts. <laughs> That's all what Rogan's into. Um, like the recent talk about his Nazi role in the creation of psychedelics with the author Norman Oller. Rogan is interested in ideas on his podcast, whereas in his new special, he prefers playing dumb. He describes his mind wondering when Elon Musk is talking, whom he calls the smartest person alive, which might be the most unintentionally effective troll of the special. This idea that people have, I know Elon's annoying, but this idea that some people have that Elon isn't intelligent or something is really funny, right? Because it's like you're almost allowing your hate for him as a person, which is understandable because he's easy to hate especially when you read about the stuff that he's done to his kids and stuff and how he acts as like a partner and shit. He doesn't seem to be the greatest guy in the world. Doesn't seem to be the nicest boss in the world, right? We get it, understandable. But to say that he's not smart is just like, it beggars comprehension, you know? Like what? Um, as someone, as a, sorry, as a showcase for him, as a comic, the live format did not benefit Rogan. He came off assured in his earlier specials and even occasionally a little bit more introspective in his first one triggered a title show that now seems like a parody of the title for a special by him he even gives voice to the critique that people have for him i sense a lot of macho posturing he says articulating it then he agrees then with them and describes how we all respond to what people like and veer away from what they don't rogan has found a podcast audience that likes conspiracies and picking cultural war battles with the left 
and he gives it to them. But he also indulges his own obsessions and incentricities. Fucking hell, why can't I say that word? Incentricities. Um, that's missing in his conventional comedy. You can sense him boldly, uh, bush, uh, bushly trying to serve an audience with his stand-up. He's giving people what he's already worked on. He's hustling, doing it. But his comedy is trickier than politics. Audiences want more than just what they want. What? Audience want more than just what they want. Sounds like nonsense, I know. But we live in weird times. Audiences want more than what they want, do they? Rogan fans seem to like it. Other fans, not so much. Maybe neutrals don't like it, but I don't... That's a weird sentence. Audiences want more than just what they want. Sounds like nonsense, I know. But we live in weird times. Hmm. Okay. Well, as you can tell, New York Times aren't fans of Rogan. They don't like him. Let's go to another review here. Curse your BuzzFeed. This BuzzFeed review is interesting. People are slamming unfunny Joe Rogan after he mocked trans people and made anti-vax jokes in his Netflix comedy special. Let's see. Rogan is under fire for jokes he made in his new Netflix special, Burn the Boats. Burn the Boats is his first stand-up special since 2018. Yeah, we get it. Um, within minutes of his opening, Joe was talking about woke topics like trans representation and pregnant men. He said that while he considers himself open-minded, he believes that trans men have been too quickly accepted into American culture. When they put your jokes like this in black and white, you do sound to sound nuts, innit? I don't think, you know what I mean? Like, hey, yo, big up NJ Ranger. Dog, you can't do an RFKJ impression as a Daily Wire guy on the JRA, and you're going to tell me it's the free speech <laughs> exactly. comedy mecca? Exactly. Come on, exactly. Times writer, exactly. but they're right. Exactly. Joe is dumb. This is safe. These MF. This MF are slow. Exactly. 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 The way he tensed up, the way he gave that guy a glare, he let him do an he let him do an impression of like Trump and some other I forgot the guy did actually the guy's actually quite good at his impressions. I forgot his name. But I guess was actually really good at impressions. And the moment he was about to do he was about to do RFK Jr., Joe fucking glared at him like, Don't you fucking dare. That's my friend. It's like <laughs> Are you a comedian? Like, what are you doing? Uh, big up NJ Ranger. Let's continue here. I'm open minded. I just want to know what happened, he said. It's almost like a pervert wizard waved a magic spell on the whole world. Um, in imitating a wizard, he joked, with a wave of his hand, you can walk into a women's locker room with a hard cock and anybody who complains is a Nazi. Abracadabra. And it just works. <laughs> He's never going to stop with this type of comedy, isn't it? He loves this type of humor, Rogan, isn't it? And everyone just accepts this new reality. It's fucking weird, man. I just think we need standards, man. I just, I, I can't just put lipstick on and now you can shit in women's rooms. <laughs> Honestly, like, I wonder if there's any other population in America. Uh, I wonder if there's another part of the world that thinks about trans people as much as Americans do. American people, especially a certain type of men, they have this obsessions with like trans people and issues and shit. They just it's always in the front of their brain. Like they're always worried and are disturbed and perplexed and concerned by just them being alive. Like it just always like I don't I don't get it. Like it's just such a weird thing to always have on your mind. <laughs> like to constantly be thinking about trans people, like, I don't know, jumping into your kids' bedrooms and twerking while they're sleeping or reading them fucking bedroom you know, reading them fucking, you know, um nighttime fucking stories and shit, you know, um jumping through the roof of their schools during assembly and fucking you know, <laughs> crashing their fucking recitals. I don't know. Taking them out to get ice cream. It's like, bro, like, it's not that deep. Like, how many trans people do you interact with on a day-to-day basis anyway? Like, this, like, invisible boogeyman. Like, it's like, relax. It doesn't... This isn't the biggest concern or the biggest issue to you at the moment. I would think so. But especially when you're Rogan, too. You're Rogan. You live behind a massive gate surrounded by Navy SEALs and big trucks and, you know, whatever else, like, like you choose who you want to be around you you're rich you can go where you want like i don't know man like the obsession with trans people is odd i don't get it really i really don't it continues i just want i just want to know what's going on man like the world has got weird joe went on to say that he does believe in trans people and supports their right as an adult to do what 
whatever they want to do that makes them happy. But I also believe in crazy people. Oh, thanks, Joe. Thanks for giving us permission to exist. Thank you. Thank you for giving us permission to exist. Oh, what what would we have done without your permission? Thank you. <laughs> it's like, what? I believe in you, trans people. I believe you. I believe you're actually trans. I'm not like Candace Owens. I don't think it's a mental illness, right? I don't think your brains are broken. I don't think you just need a couple of Addies and it will set yourself straight. I don't believe that. I actually believe <laughs> in your right to exist, in your right to representation and how you identify. But I'm just going to keep making jokes about you still because it's easy. Jesus Christ, look at what he wears, isn't it? He's a funny lad, isn't it? The tightest jeans, the tightest top. Joe just likes to Joe just likes to look like he's bursting. He actually enjoys that look, isn't it? Joe just enjoys looking like he's about to explode. You know? He wants to look like he's about to explode, like <laughs> you know, in like tight Henley. I've never seen a fucking Lycra Henley, by the way. I've never seen a Henley shirt that's like that tight. Look how tight those jeans are. You can literally see the outline of his balls. Like Joe just wants to look like he's about to explode. Fuck. Fucking hell, Joe. Breathe a little bit with your fucking clothes. Um, somehow or another, that got left out in the equation, Joe went off. All of a sudden, crazy people just went away, like the flu in COVID. Oh my god, the COVID jokes. He also made jokes about gay men who he said he doesn't want to be around, and jokes about the strange times of coronavirus. Blah 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 blah. So everyone's not happy about him. Let's go to another review before we move on here. Bear with me a second. Here's another review. Oh, look at that title. Look at that title from movieweb.com. Movieweb.com. Joe Rogan new comedy special is a boring showcase for the Dunning-Kruger effect. New Joe Rogan comedy special is a boring showcase for the Dunning-Kruger effect. God damn. Brutal bars here. What did they say? Six years after his last stand-up special, one year after opening his Austin Comedy Club, and deep into his $250 million deal with Spotify, Joe Rogan is back. Um... Burn the Boats is his latest Netflix live endeavor following the successful Netflix comedy festival, The Roast of Tom Brady. This combined with the fact that Rogan is a whipping boy for the left mainstream audience has a long history of silly mistakes. Let's continue. Rogan begins, his pl Rogan's begins with placating the Texas audience and discussing weed. He then later cons mentions cocaine, acid, mushrooms, and the same energy as a shuckling college <laughs> freshman. <laughs> uh, been there done that he discusses aliens evolution fear factor homophobia and all of them somehow have to do with penises <laughs> uh, he seems obsessed with them the same way amy schumer whitney cummins is obsessed with vaginas that's actually a good point that's actually a good point if you're gonna take the piss if you're gonna take the piss out of elijah schlesinger out of nikki whatever her name is, Haley or whatever that was on the roast of Tom Brady. If you're going to take the piss out of Whitney Cummins and Amy Schumer for constantly talking about their pussies, vagina, pussy, 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 vagina, you have to take the piss out of Rogan and his friends for constantly mentioning dicks, for constantly mentioning cocks, for constantly mention mentioning penises. It's just too much. Like, it's just too much. I would hazard a guess. I've never been in these conversations deeply, but I would hazard a guess. Even gay guys, don't talk about dicks as much as Rogan and his friends do. It's weird. It's weird their obsession with how with how someone's hung, with what their piece looked like, with describing it in detail, with what happens with their dick when they jump, when they run, when they were laughing. Like they don't stop talking about dicks. The whole entire LA comedy scene adjacent people love talking about dicks, but it all happened to be straight, allegedly. We continue. Rogan talks about men at length with little insight, wisdom, charm, or humor. He yells, I love gay men, but I think about gay men the same way I think about mountain lions. I'm happy they're real, but I don't want to be surrounded by them. They're a bunch of dudes who fuck dudes. I don't like my chances. Um, Joe, um, Joe Duff protest too much? It's jokes like that which pretend to be common sense and relatable instead of homophobic. But even if it wasn't homophobic, it would still wouldn't be funny. It would still be unfunny. <laughs> That's a really good line. Um, it's just narcissistic and weird. It blends in with the other traditional look at me. I said something naughty. Ain't I a bad boy counterculture stuff like the intimately cliched and boring Ricky Gervais. 
joking about assumed gender, not being able to say slurs, and how kids dress like Hitler for Halloween when they were growing up. It's also boring. There are seeds of jokes in this, but Rogan never does the work to let them grow. Instead, he just yells about cocks and complains that he can't say the N word. <laughs> Yo, this is a brutal review, but very accurate de depiction and, you know, of what that special was about. God damn it, bro. He just yells about cocks and complains he can't say the N-word. Um, let's continue. Uh, Rogan des desperately tries to seem like the average sane man in an increasingly insane world, rather than a billionaire who can influence millions of young men's minds. Don't take any advice from me, he shouts, refuses to take any responsibility. It'd be truly malicious and cynical if he wasn't just as genuinely dumb person, almost to an adorable degree. Like a drooling preschooler on a sugar high, he doesn't have a grasp on reality despite screaming about being one of the last sane people left. Yo, yo, it'd be truly malicious and cynical if he wasn't such a genuinely dumb person. <laughs> oh my god almost to an adorable degree like a drawling preschooler on a sugar high he doesn't have a grasp on reality despite screaming about being the last sane person left ouch um another one uh he says i get why young people have to want to be woke i really do old people man they fucked up the world man no let's try communism i get it you don't know any better. I get it. You're young. I get it. And also, people desperately want to be on a team. I get it. We're tribal. And there's only two teams in this country. There's a left and there's a right. You know, you don't want to be independent. Honestly, man, these, like, Rogan specials, I just, it's just podcasting, isn't it? It's just live podcasting. Live podcasting without a desk and without chairs. <laughs> I'm just thankful he didn't fuck the store. That's what I'm thankful about. Uh, the, 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 that that still didn't get abused. Let's continue. Like all of his many errors, like all of his many errors, <laughs> he literally doesn't know that there have been more than registered independents than the left or right for many years, and it's all and it's at an all-time high. He doesn't know that the vast majority of young people don't want communism whatsoever. They're just fed up with the inequalities of capitalism and the most extreme. Some of them want democratic socialism. But Rogan's worldview was never been defined by the world, reality, logic, science, etc. It's been shaped by a long conversation with weirdos and comedians. So it's tragically ironic that Rogan says at one point, seemingly unaware of the Dunning-Kruger effect, I hate dumb people that are wrong and confident. <laughs> because Rogan is like that. Um, the words of a man who's become a better joke than one he can tell. First as a tragedy, then as a fast Joe. Joe Rogan burned the boats, premiered on 20. Da, 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 da. Yo, this movie web person, this movie web person, whoever you are, you eviscerate Joe Rogan. That was a brutal review. Who's this person? Big up Matt Marler. Matt Marler, you absolutely eviscerate Rogan. Um, let's do one more, then we'll move on. One more, one more, one more. Let's go for Vulture. Let's see what Vulture had to say about Rogan. Vulture Rogan, courtesy of Kathy Van Arendonk. Let's see what Kathy Van Arendonk had to say about Rogan. Joe Rogan plays an unconvincing fool. In his new special, Burn the Boat, Joe Rogan imagines himself as a global court jester, a just having fun provocateur with a pert title. Did I do that? Approach to important issues of the day. It's a game of inescapable blamelessness. If he's right about all the stuff he's yelling about, then great. Hope you had a good time. If he's wrong, you're an idiot for listening to him and whatever, it's just jokes. <laughs> that's what all comedians do though, right? I guess all people find that kind of annoying, but that's what all comedians do. It's just like Tim Dillon is a master of it. What do I know? I don't know anything. I'm just talking. What do I know? I do it myself sometimes, right? So we all do it. It is what it is. Oh shit, am I a comedian? Uh, this is obviously an obnoxious approach to public commentary, but it's just as important in the context of Burn the Boats. It produced an underwhelming, exhausting, and lazily derivative hour of stand-up. God almighty, bro. The sentences they're using to describe Rogan are pretty brutal these days, right? God damn it. It produced an underwhelming, exhausting, and lazily derivative hour of stand-up. Ouch. 
There's such a thin veneer of society, Rogan tells the audience about 50 minutes into the hour. He has just explained to the crowd that a DNA test told him he had 57% more Neanderthal than his genetic makeup than most people. He's been thinking about how close we all are to K people. These, uh, <laughs> that's why you have those thoughts, man. You know those thoughts you have where you're like, I can't believe I'm thinking that because I could never do that. He goes on to describe ideas that he's sure everyone has had all the time. Why not go down some scoot? Why not go down? Why not go mow down some scooters that are dodging around in traffic? What if you grab the cop's gun while he were, while he stands in line in front of you at Starbucks? I don't know why I was thinking that. He says after describing a fantasy about men murdering each other on the way to Mars, but he was thinking that, and he really just wants to say it aloud. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a good point that joke about the guys murdering each other on the way to mars was insane <laughs> oh my god when people repeat back your jokes to you it doesn't sound as funny um rogan is outlining that he sees an universal human experience as a fundamental explanation for why society is designed the way it is we're at the mercy of a violent cave people brains he says and the world needs homeowners associations and irs payments to distract us from our base itself presumably this is a compelling perspective about the world for much of the audience but it's mostly a way for him to paint a self-portrait Throughout Burn the Boats, Rogan continually falls into what he describes as rabbit holes, stretches on gender, wokeness, trans people, conspiracy theories, evolution, and the difference between how men and women think about being gay. I'm not going to lie, if more stand-up specials came with like summaries and descriptions about what they're about, you probably wouldn't, you probably wouldn't watch them based on their description alone. If you heard that there was a special out there by Rogan that contained the following subjects, gender wokeness trans people conspiracy theories evolution and the difference between how men and women think about being gay you'd probably miss that innit? you'd probably be like you know what i'll pass i've heard him speak about this a million times i'll pass um but he's not righteously mad or ideologically invested he's just got all these thoughts in his head a map of his own intrusive images weird hung-ups and cultural taboos and he just has to get them out he's not sure if they're true or not and he doesn't care either way he doesn't think about what happens if millions of people that listen to him believe him just as long as they laugh when they when he says it and he gets as much attention as possible he's just doing his thing he gets to pretend he's too dumb to be held responsible and he also gets to wink at how dumb we all are for taking him seriously oh ho, 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 ho. that's a very very astute and accurate observation of rogan but i think all comedians are a bit like this to be honest that is interesting that is interesting when they're saying something insightful and smart they want to have to give all the credit for it when they say something that might lead people to do some crazy shit they don't take any responsibility for it i'm just a comedian man i'm just talking man i'm just an idiot man it's like you can't have it both ways it continues rogan's aware of his enormous reach the joe rogan experience is the most popular um, they listen to number blah, blah, blah. still the message in burn the boats is that everyone should just be chill about this it's boring that he should have to be careful about what he says just because he's enormously influential here's my advice man don't take my advice he says he quotes gets taken out of context because people take things that i say drunk and high as fuck and they put them in quotes don't take his advice about covid he says don't listen to him about vaccines don't pay attention to anything he says that happens to sound racist because he swears he isn't joe rogan's giving out dangerous vaccine information he says mimicking his detractors fuck did i he says i might have but at the same time if you're getting a vaccine advice from me is it really my fault he kind of has a point he kind of has a point he kind of has a point it is and rogan seems to know it because compared to other topics, he only briefly touches on the big acting vaccine claims. He's also made endlessly about other over the years, um, framing them as jokes or open questions rather than hard, fast truths. Okay, you get the point. You get the point. Vulture doesn't like him too. So everyone's destroying Rogan. No one likes Rogan. Everybody thinks he's fucking terrible. But what say you? What say you?